Welcome to episode one of Preparing for the Gregson Trumpet Concerto. I am playing this piece with the Alabama Symphony Orchestra in mid-February, and I thought it would be kind of cool to try to catalog or sort of do a video diary of how I'm preparing for it, how am I organizing my work, how am I actually going about practicing and finding problems and deciding on solutions. And I have no idea really how this is all gonna to come together, but I'm gonna do my best to try to provide a resource that accurately depicts what I'm doing to get ready for this piece. So this is day one of my preparation and I have two main goals. The first one is to separate some of the more technical sections from the piece and write a progression that will allow me to practice those in a program. And then also to listen to some recordings or listen to mostly Edvard Antonsen's recording and to look at the score that I have and just see what I can find. That's the goal for day one and then when we have that we'll be good to go for another couple of weeks of practicing. So the first step in getting ready for the Gregson is going to be going through the part and writing down all of the most technically challenging sections. I'm going to write a program for just those sections and that'll be the first two weeks of my preparation. I need to do it this way because I'm preparing for the Cincinnati Principal Trumpet Audition and so I don't have a ton of extra time to prepare for that and then also practice all of the Gregson right now. So this is a way for me to be able to chip away at these technically demanding sections which are the sections I generally need the most time with and then to feel like once the Cincinnati audition is over, I'm gonna be able to put all of my energies and efforts into the Gregson. So to start with, I'm just gonna write in this notebook, Gregson sections, and we'll start with movement one. Again, I'm not gonna put all of the sections in there, I'm just going to put the most technically challenging ones. I've learned this piece before, so there's a lot of it I'm familiar with. So a lot of what I'm doing and the sections that I'm gonna put in here are mostly just to make sure I'm doing these things correctly the way that I want to, not necessarily to specifically learn it because I've done a lot of that work before. So the first section I'm gonna put in here is uh, at 13 in the first movement and I'm gonna go all the way until 15, this muted section. And then I'm also gonna continue on uh, at 15, going all the way until 18. We keep going through definitely this little triple tongue part, uh, a little further down at 20 to 21 will be good. And then that's gonna be it for the first movement. I'm not gonna put much of the second movement in here because it's just mostly about dragging as much musical value out of it as possible. The technique is not really what's challenging. For the third movement, what I'm gonna do is just put the beginning of it to basically the end of the first page. So beginning to uh, three after 48. This is establishing a theme that is gonna come back a bunch of times. And even though the theme is a little bit different, all the other times it comes back, I think just by practicing this one will set me up to be able to address those variations easily later on. And then really the only other section that I need to address is uh, right here, four before 59, four before 59 to 60 and then 60 to four before 62. I love this section of the piece, uh, but the fact that it's so noodly, I wanna make sure that I've got all of my habits set up right at slow tempos so that I can speed it up easier along the way. So as you can see, I've taken the sections from when I was just looking through the piece and I've put them into a spreadsheet like this. I've decided what goal tempo I want for each of them. So for the first movement, we're looking at 96. That's what Gregson wrote. And then for the third movement, we're looking at 144 and then 100 for the six, eight section. And then all I did was I just went back 4%. So 96 divided by 4% is 92 divided by 4% is 88. And then I copied this tempo and I just went all the way back. I split this up every other day so you can see that I'm not practicing each section each day. I like to do it that way because I find it gives me better focus in my efforts toward getting the most out of my practice. Also, having three specific repetitions 
that are at specific tempos really helps me focus as well. So I'll start this program tomorrow and what I'll end up doing is starting here on day one and I'll play movement one 13 to 15 at these three tempos. Then I'll play movement one 20 to 21 at these three tempos. And then I'll do that section at these three tempos and I'll be done. The way I generally handle this to make sure my practice is very deliberate is that all of these repetitions are repetitions that I will record. I may practice in between the repetitions if I find I need to isolate something in order to be able to understand how to play it better, but I'll definitely record these three repetitions so I'm constantly getting feedback about my efforts throughout my practice sessions. So that's one of the two goals that I had set out for today accomplished. Uh, the other goal is to study for a little bit, pull out the score that I have, and listen to Ole Edvard Antonsen's recording, and just to see what I can find about the interaction between the soloist and the orchestra and maybe writing in some things in my part about who is playing when so that I really have a, a firm grasp of the whole piece, not just my part in particular. So I just finished up listening to the piece with the score. Uh, Oldie sounds incredible on his recording. It's kind of humbling to hear how effortless it sounds, but obviously that's what we will be trying to achieve through the course of this preparation. When I'm doing score study, I don't necessarily know always what I'm looking for. I don't necessarily have a method of studying, so a lot of what I feel like I have gotten out of it in the past is just by repeatedly coming back to it, repeatedly having exposure to the same thing, I feel like I start to notice deeper and deeper things as I go along, and so that's gonna be my approach for this, is not necessarily to try to figure out, you know, okay, this is how it goes, now I don't need to score study, but rather just continually throughout the process of preparing, revisiting the piece with the score to see if there's new things I can find over time. So that's all I have planned for day one of my preparation. It may seem weird that I didn't do any practicing for the piece on day one, but I'm really trying to embrace making sure I have all of my ducks in a row before I dive into the work that I'm gonna do. I wanna make sure I have the structure for my practice set up and that through listening to the piece with a score that I have a big picture look at what's going on so that when I dive into the nitty gritty through the program and when I'm actually practicing, I have some context next for what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. This is something that I've started to value a lot more as I have matured as a musician and I understand more about how music is best learned in terms of the science of how our brains work. And so uh, I'm trying to do all of what I know how to do to be as prepared as I can for this piece. So that's why I am doing it this way. We'll see you in day two.